Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock, and I'm Pearl of Wisdom. You're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. We're doing uh, a series on every the first round of the playoffs. We got through a couple already, and we're on to Vegas versus Chicago. And the we part of when it's we feel like it is Steel Flyers and Joe Borek, some of the finest in the land. I'll tell you right now. Um, this is going to be a very interesting series, uh, which, which probably I don't think should have been that interesting, to tell you the honest truth. But after what Chicago did to Edmonton, uh, I don't, yeah, like you hear me hesitating, and that's a reason. What, what do you, what do you just throw right out at to their Ron? There are steel flyers, same thing. Uh, what, uh, what do you think about this this uh, series? What do you who do you who are you leaning? Are you scared of Chicago? Oh, leaning. Okay, oh, we might be leaning on this one. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me. It's always a pleasure to be with the pearls of wisdom and the meteors of knowledge right here. If you guys aren't following these two guys, you really are missing out. You really need to be following these guys um, for sure. Uh, I'll tell you what. Chicago scares me a little bit because of how they utterly played against Edmonton. Now, I'm not trying to take anything away from Edmonton at all, but I thought they were, they came out and they were the hungrier team and they played a little better, you know? And I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to take anything away from Edmonton because I thought that Edmonton was going to handle Chicago without any issues or problems because they were playing in their own building. And I will be the first to admit that I'm going to eat crow on this one because I utterly did not even count on Chicago being anywhere close. And I thought Edmonton was just going to wipe the ice with them. And that just was not the case. So I have no room picking any more teams (laughs) that involve Chicago. (laughs) Because I'm going to lean Chicago, but I'm going to pick Vegas. <laughs> okay. I think Vegas has got uh, a better team up and down the lineup. I think they are they have a world-class goalie uh, waiting in the wings uh, in, in Flurry, And he's not even going to start. So, I mean, and he's waiting in the wings. So... I just think that Vegas is going to be a little too much more than what Edmonton was against Chicago. I think Chicago's defense is going to break against Vegas. Um, Secretly, I have to root for Chicago, uh, but, and I'll lean a little bit towards Chicago, but, but really I'm, I'm going to go with Vegas on this one. I think they're, they're going to be too much for Chicago. I understand Chicago has been playing really well. They played really well against Edmonton, but if they want to get into a run and gun with with uh, Vegas, I think that's going to be a losing proposition for them, you know. And and I think that's what I think that's kind of what dismantled them against Edmonton. You know what I mean? And Edmonton, the Edmonton was not able to match them, and Chicago was able to just take it to them. You know what I mean? When I think Vegas is going to be able to to play that run and gun style and beat them at it. So. Yeah, it's going to be hard to play a running gun against Chicago or against Vegas as Chicago because, like I said before the podcast, they allow the most shots this year. Sometimes teams like Edmonton or a team when McDavid, Dreisaitl, and Yamamoto aren't on the ice are similar to other teams that are, let's just get the puck on net when those guys aren't on the ice. Yeah, where, yeah. Where you're not always shooting the most highest percentage shots, where Vegas is – is more let's run and gun down a few lines. I mean, most people barely knew before he stepped up in their runs when he came over there who Tomas Nosek was, and then ever since he went to Vegas, they love him. So, like, they've had a lot of patch already we talked about. Hasn't really been in. He's going to come back, and that's going to significantly help them because he hasn't played since March. So, I mean, they have guys coming back that are going to help them even get better when they've already looked good. Ryan yeah. Smith is basically their energizer bunny in that team. That's a guy that everybody always has loved since going there, which is another mistake that Florida made. But, you know, there's a big list of those. And uh, Wait, we're not I, doing the one about Florida, are we? No, no. No, I just, okay. I just, I, just take, I just had to take that shot a little bit. Yeah, I know. Uh, but then you got Stachny, that's a veteran, Chandler Stevenson. I think their yeah. lineup 
is too deep running gunning. I think the way Chicago wins this series is if Corey Crawford plays like he played against Edmonton, other than the one game he won that he gave up four goals in the game he lost and he gave up six. But the last two he won, he looked great. Uh, he made, well, for the last one, he made 45 saves or 45, yeah. or 43 saves, excuse 43, me, yeah. 45 shots saved. So he looked really good. And then he's just looked solid overall. So if he's able to look good, that's how Chicago is going to be able to beat the Golden Knights because they have, you hinted at it, they have Leonard going against Chicago's former team. He's going to want to kind of prove himself in this series. And if he doesn't, you got Mark Andre to fall back on. I mean, yeah, exactly. who, wants, who wants, like, what better can you have than Mark Andre Fleury to fall back on? Right. Like, and, you know, and, uh, oh, uh, is it Laner? Yeah, yeah. right. He was the guy that they traded for from Chicago. Right? From Chicago. Yeah. yeah, right? So now he's – and he's going to be the guy starting, right? He's starting. Yeah. Laner's starting, right? So – You probably and, should be really? starting if you put up a 920 save percentage. Yeah. For the yeah. season before you got traded. I mean, that's why I usually don't like when people take shots at Crawford this year because the dude had a below 500 record, but look at his inner number. And you're yeah. going, oh, those are actually pretty good for playing in Chicago's defense. <laughs> like, Crawford I, always gets slighted. Yeah. Crawford no. always gets slighted. He's got slighted. He was getting slighted when they won cups because the team was so good in front of him and all those stuff like that. Isn't that the horrible? Guy's be a Hall of Famer. And yeah. probably going to be up on the podium saying, who's this guy? Yeah, who's, you know, like, who's, who's, who's Crawford? Yeah, right. <laughs> that's the one thing I always found funny, that Crawford got slighted every single time. Maybe because there was more bigger names. Like, Price was hot yeah. during his time. And, you know, there was a lot of great players happening around him. But Crawford's always been a great gold member. It's and, like one of those uh, uh, back in the day. Like, you're looking, you're there, like, you're covering it for the Hall of Fame. And, like, people that don't know. Is much higher. You like they're like newer fans are like. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, who, hey, that's Corey Crawford. Did he, play <laughs> for he played for that Chicago <laughs> team. Yeah. Did he play for Chicago. Wait, hold on, hold on, wait, wait. Oh, his yeah, name is on the yeah. cup. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> this Vegas team, like all, this like... Vegas team has surprised me quite a bit. I, I've kind of yeah. enjoyed watching them grow. They did things outside of the box. They didn't re. They didn't start their team on a rebuilding process. They went out and got veterans and said, "We're going for it right now." And they're trying to keep it up. Uh, general manager there, McKee, McGee. He uh, he did a lot of shrewd moves, like getting Alex Tuck. From Minnesota, was mm -hmm. insane. Yep. like, uh, and I think to me, like, uh, as far as Chicago is concerned, Crawford's going to play well. I don't think this is going to be a, a, a sweep, but um, yeah, I'm with I, you I on that. They, 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 with the Oilers, they had Koskinen. in here. They have let you mentioned Laner, who I've been touting for a long time as a fan, you know, great goaltender. Um, and then you said you have Flurry, but they just have that like a third line of Ch Ch um, Chandler Stevenson, which you mentioned up. They picked up from Washington. This kid Nicholas Waugh has looked very good this year. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. And then Alex Tuck. That's a little better than the Oilers' third line there by quite a bit, actually. And, and they so, match up better. And they match up better against Chicago than than on that line as well, too. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So. Yeah. And then Cousins, Nosek, and Reeves uh, is a great, is a very good fourth line. Chicago might be able to compete with them in the forward position, but um, and, and because of depth, but they're only competing with them. And I would take uh, the speed and and size and goaltending and overall, especially defense over Chicago's any day. But I said the same thing about the Oilers. I was I still can't I look at Chicago's defense and I go, what? How is that possible? So so I wasn't the only one that was completely and utterly wrong about that one, right? Right. I well in general I think like most people were totally gonna take the Oilers to win that series. I mean it's like how can you be in your own building and yeah. give that advantage away because look both the number one seeds lost right and both of the 
home teams lost. And we talked about what for 15 minutes. How I know. <laughs> I was saying, I don't know if I said it on video, but I was arguing, talking about that before we talked about it because I was one of the people that thought that wasn't that big of an advantage without the extra pick me up of the fan. Yeah, we I did talk like, about that. Yeah, we I did talk about talking that. About like you get the caveats and bounces, but it's not like the old school stadiums where like the boards are messed up in one stadium, so such and such can bank it off of this end board. And it's always going to bounce in front to Patrice Bergeron. Like there's not like, <laughs> yeah. stadiums that are like that anymore, like they were back in the day. So it doesn't play as much. Me, as it was just the whole feel of being in your home place and your own. Oh yeah, but they kicked them out of their own locker room. That's what, it, that's what also affected them when the other oh, team did they? considered the oh, home see, team. Oh, see, I didn't know that. When oh. the other team was considered the home team, they had the decision to use the home team's locker room. And they um, went, yeah, yeah, we're using the oil. So Chicago was in Edmonton's locker room. And, <laughs> and CBJ was in Toronto's locker room. So imagine that. Uh, your head as snap, your snap, yeah, snap. So now, that, now, that I get to say, now I get to say, if I would have known that, I would have picked Chicago. So that one doesn't count either. <laughs> oh, oh, no, you can't be doing. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, but if I could get away with it, I probably would. You know, yeah, like, I would too. If I'd have known that too. Ever. Yeah, I agree. If I'd have known that too, that I would have probably. Even with that, I was still like Columbus over Toronto. So I mean, I was saying that too, but uh, but I did think it was an advantage. I didn't really know how much, but I thought being. But then I didn't know about that. I didn't actually even know about that. I didn't you hadn't either. I didn't. and I thought it was going to be an advantage about, too. We should, probably, we should probably talk about this series. Uh, it seems like I. I why is it that I want to say this? I want to say Vegas, but uh, there's something in me that thinks that Chicago's going to take the stupid series. Is it just that residue of the Edmonton Oilers getting turned around the way they did? Because they, they really did look – Edmonton played horrible. Edmonton played really bad. Back on their heels when they were ahead. About bunch yeah, of they did give up the lead Vegas. there on that one. I just don't see Vegas falling to those traps the way Pittsburgh and Edmonton did. That I don't. I don't. So you're going with Vegas on this? Yeah, I like Stone as a leader. I, I think that Vegas has better leadership at this point. Not that Edmonton, you know, they have McDavid, but they don't really have, like, their best players are not, not grizzled veterans like Cage. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Where Vegas does have that. Yeah. What do you yeah. think? Vegas also has depth. You added, uh, you have a guy in Nick Cousins who came from the flight and scored three points in the I mean, like, nobody, like, you don't expect that. He's a guy that's always had some skill, but he's more of a bottom six guy, usually a fourth line guy. But he's uh, a really good one. But though. he's a really good one, but he's a guy that steps up in the playoffs. So, like, Vegas is good at scouting those guys that they know are high energy guys that once the playoffs hit, like Stevenson's another, that are going to have good. Roy's another that you said, uh, going to have good playoffs when it's that up the ante you have that adrenaline running through your veins they're those types of players just like we talked about sam bennett in the earlier video yeah yeah definitely um we all saw chicago play very well against a team that didn't play very well how are they going to be when suddenly that team is now challenging them at the blue line when that team is now suddenly standing them up and making them have to skate around instead of the dump and chase. And, you know, let's see how that's going to be. You know, that's yeah. where I think the dirty part of this is going to come true on this. You know what I mean? And I think that's where you're going to see the defense and the, and the depth shine through for the Vegas Golden Knights on this. Look, I'm going to do this. I'm going to lean towards Chicago, but I'm going to say Vegas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> because well, if my if my wife doesn't hear me say go Chicago yeah. at least once, so I, I I understand, I suppose. My wife came from the Philippines and came over here and chose Pittsburgh Penguins as her team. So that was lovely. Really? Yeah. Uh can okay. But I, I, I'm trying to sway I am uh, yeah, you need to keep working on that one, buddy. Yeah. Oh, he's like, keep on saying Bring her to Philly. From the, 
you're from the Philippines. I understand you don't know hockey. Crosby's a good looking dude, but you're wrong. Anyway, um... <laughs> bring her to Philly, bro. Bring her to Philly. Come on, bring her on. <laughs> Vegas is one of the few teams that showed some pushback pushback in the round robin too. They were down in St. Louis and they came back. They yep. looked like it was important for them to win, even yep. when it may not be more than any other team out there. I think uh, DeBoer has been a fan. I've been a fan of DeBoer for quite some time. And uh, I really thought he got a bad rap in the places that he's been. Uh, I thought he did a really good job considering the lineup uh, and considering yeah. some other things that were going on in there. And I think he's found his place here in Vegas. Um, I, I think that Vegas will, I, I'm, I'm going to go definitely with Vegas here and I don't know. I, there's something about this team. There's something about this team that may just kind of go all the way. You know what I mean? I was just going to say, let me throw this at both you guys. Let me throw this at both you guys. Do you think, because look, Vegas did exactly what the Flyers did. They were the fourth seed came in and won number one seed, right? Yeah. That's exactly what the Flyers did. Vegas is coming in with a lot of depth, just like the Flyers are. Mm -hmm. They're set at goalie, just like the Flyers are. Their top six guys are pretty decent. Our top six guys are pretty decent. What do you think about Vegas and Philly for the cup final? It's possible. Yeah, it's the favorite right now when I saw it. Oh, it is? Yeah, the okay. Flyers and Vegas were considered the cup favorites. I think part of that is also because Vegas was Philadelphia, but that's a different story for a different time. Um, the uh, but yeah, I think there's a chance that that's going to happen. It's going to be a great matchup because of the deep line. I think the Flyers' defense, with a couple guys on Vegas's defense struggling this year, if they don't continue to step up in the playoff, might have a tad advantage there because some guys on the bottom pairing of Vegas's defense did struggle this year, where the Flyers really did not. Didn't so, right? Yeah, yeah, that would be a difference i see yeah and the yeah. vegas is the vegas size on defense concerns me i was yeah. gonna bring that up they're not very big okay. on the D. uh if colorado gets i don't know what's going on with bednar but if he gets his head out of his butt and starts putting fred south instead of grubauer I, I i don't get it i don't get it i don't like to question a great coach like that nope. uh but uh I thought Franz House was the best coach going in. Maybe there's something. Maybe he looks nervous in the room or something like that. I don't know. But um, Colorado, I still think, would be my pick on that side to uh, give Vegas a good run. Um, but Vegas does look like the one with the best momentum. Going yeah, you might see that in the, in the Western Conference Finals is Colorado and, and Vegas. Yeah. But yeah. the thing is, we also got to bring up and we're, is is it like we've mentioned several times before, we have Chicago coming in with momentum coming off of some healthy competition already, right? Um, so I think that is a factor. But in Although, this case, I think Chicago maybe got a bad, uh, like got kind of unlucky because Vegas looked like they played the most momentum uh, with the most momentum in that ground. And with that in mind, I think their mindset is in a better place than maybe even the Oilers. Like, well, definitely where the Oilers were, but where other teams may be. Yeah, I think when you sweep the round robin, you're not really, even though another team had a series, it kind of balances out more in the end. If you had a crappy game somewhere in the middle where you looked terrible, and then you still won because you won two of the games and the other teams look worse than you, then that's still a thing. But the fact that Vegas came in and kind of just buzzsawed it through it, even after going down in the one game, they stood up for Flurry and went, nope, you're not getting this loss, Mark Andre. You're getting a win today with allowing four goals because we hung you out the dry early in this game. And yeah. they came back and got that win for him. So – I think this team's playing with a lot of fight right now. That's the biggest reason I think they're going to win on top of all the depth and people I said. You're playing with that tenacity and bounce back. Uh, that's huge to have. Chicago's playing with some of it, but it's the problem of player depth. Eventually, it's going to catch up to you when talent it yeah, really starts outplaying you a little bit down your lines with your last two lines. Like your third and fourth line are getting outplayed by Vegas's third and fourth line. That might start to hurt you. 
Because we know that's going to happen. We, we think that's going to happen anyway, because we know that those lines are a little bit more talented than the Chicago lines when they match up. You know what I mean? And the Vegas players are, are – or the Vegas team is a better team down down that side of the, the matchups. You know what I mean? So, yeah. We... Well, boys and girls, I think we've got it figured out. See, you don't even have to watch the games. You already know what's going to Yeah, happen. we're good. Yeah, we're, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you guys uh, Wednesday. Yeah. And if you don't believe us, look at our last series where we nailed it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this has been fun like usual, guys. I've been Pearl of Wisdom, and I still am. Um, and uh, you can check me out on BPAL Picks and these guys' fine programming that they always have. We're going to be doing more podcasts like that coming up uh, when we get finally uh, when we get going here for sure. Um, where are you guys? What are you guys doing? Where do you? I know you have a website there that's a spanking new, good looking website there, Steel Flyer. Why don't you tell them about all that? Hey, uh, you can follow me uh, on Twitter at SteelFlyers52. But the best part is, is that you can come over to www.steelflyers.com and get connected to the Meteors of Knowledge, Joe Bork, and get connected to the Pearls of Wisdom on the, all of their connections. You can watch all of their videos and everything like that, a one-stop shop. Come to steelflyers.com to check out Perlo and to check out Joe and all the stuff that they're connected to. And uh, we got a couple videos up there, too, so you can check us out there, too. So thanks very much for having us, man. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, we appreciate um, being on the podcast all the time. It's lovely to be on as much as possible, which is almost daily at this point, which I love doing. It. <laughs> yeah, I'm with but, you. Um, but uh, mine's at JJBorick26, true underscore Philly sport for a podcast, true Philadelphian sportscast spelled out for our Instagram and Tumblr and then right for overtime heroics on hockey, baseball, same with club sports radio and flyers nitty gritty with Jamie Basco, who's on this fine program. Every so uh, usually a co- once a month, I think you're yeah. 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 Once yeah. a month. Jamie finds yeah. time for me once a month. Yeah. Yeah. He's got, yeah. I pretty much, yeah, I got, I beg these guys every day and they, to eventually get come over to my way. I love Jamie. I love uh, I love you guys and all the work we yeah, do together. And I'm having so much fun. I uh, hope you guys are having fun too. Subscribe, bell. You know what I'm saying. Tell us in the comment section if we're full of it or not, uh, and tell us what you think as well, so we can talk back and forth. Because I love doing that kind of stuff. Love talking hockey. Do it all day, all the time. Have a great day. Lots of love to you. With the hockey.